In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new project in MPLAB X. So to begin with, obviously, you open up MPLAB X IDE. Now before I get started, I'm first going to show you my file structure. So I've created a projects folder, and inside it I have various empty folders for all the different labs. So all my projects for Lab 1, I'll put inside the Lab 1 folder. All my projects for Lab 2, I'll put inside the Lab 2 folder, and so on. I've also got a common folder up here where I'm going to put files that would be useful to a variety of projects. So let me go into my lab one folder right now. And right now all I've got inside it is a piece of supplied code that I got off of the course website. And I'm going to add this to my project later. When I create my project in MPLAB X, it's also going to make a folder of files. And I'm going to put that inside this lab one folder also. So now I'll go back to MPLAB X, and as I said, I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to store it inside this Lab 1 folder. Now I'm going to go through all the steps for creating a project now. When it's your turn to do this, though, you should follow the steps listed in your lab manual. So to begin with, we go to File, New Project. That opens up this pane, and we want to choose Microchip Embedded and Standalone Project, and then we can click Next. Here, for the family, you want to select Advanced 8-Bit MCUs, and then you want to choose your chip, but there are a lot of chips here. So the fastest way to do this is actually to highlight this and just type it in. So pick 18F46K42, and it's found it, so I select it. And then for the tool, I want to choose Simulator, and click Next again. On this screen, you want to choose the XC8 compiler, and then click Next. And so now we want to give the project a name and choose a location for it. And remember, I wanted to put it inside that Lab 1 folder. So I'm going to browse, first of all, for the project location and just make sure that I'm in the right place. So I'm in my project folder and then the Lab 1 folder. So that looks fine. I'll hit Open and I want to give it a name. So Lab 1, Part A. And your course instructor has asked that you always include your name as part of your project name. So I'll include that. You can leave this checkbox selected if you want to. You can also unselect it. It doesn't really matter too much. And down here for the encoding, we want UTF-8. So again, there's a lot of options here. So if you go one, two, three clicks down, there's UTF-8. So we select that, and then we click Finish. And it's going to create my project now. So up here in the corner, this is my project, and I'm going to expand it so that you can see the different parts of it. So there's a folder called header files, important files, linker files, source files, and so on. The only two that you're going to use are the header files and the source files. So there's two types of files that you might get in this course. Header files that have a .h extension, and source files, which have a .c extension. Now you'll remember, back in my files, that I had a piece of code, and it's a .c file. So I'm going to be putting it in my source files. Also notice that I've got a new file here inside my Lab 1 folder. This is my project. So this is the folder full of files that MPLAB X created for me when it created my project. So everything in the project is located in here. So going back to MPLAB X now, I've got a C file, and I need to put it into the source files. So right now, my source files are completely empty. There's nothing in there, so I need to put something in. So the way to do that when you've got an existing item is you right-click on source files or header files, and you go to add existing item, because that piece of code already exists. Then you're going to be able to navigate to your piece of code. So I'm going to go up one level, because currently I'm inside my project file. So I go up one level, now I'm inside my Lab 1 folder, and I can see my piece of code here. So I'll select that, and I'm now going to tell MPLAB X to add this file to my project. However, rather than using this file, I'm going to have it make a copy for itself. And the way in which I do that is I just select this little copy checkbox down here, right above the Select button. So I make sure this is checked, and then I click Select. And now, inside my source files, you see that I have that piece of code. Now obviously you're going to be asked to make some changes to the code as part of your experiment. And the way in which you can do that inside MPLAB X is you can double click on this piece of code. And over here, it opens up a new tab that has that code in it. And you can make changes here. 
So for example, I can scroll right to the bottom and I'm going to change this message. So instead of saying AppSide 1299 Lab 1 Part A, I'm going to say AppSide 1299 Hello World. So now I've changed this and I can either go File, Save, or I can simply build the project and it's going to save these changes to the copy of the code. Let me show you what I mean. So I can now build my project by clicking the little build icon, a hammer, up here at the top. And down here we'll see some stuff happening. And when it's done, it says build successful, which is good news. It means I didn't have any errors. Now just scrolling up a little bit here, you should keep an eye out for warning messages and error messages. If your build fails, that's usually because you've got an error somewhere. But even in code that does build, you may see some warnings. Now these ones are just warning us that there's a function that was never called. It's actually not a big deal, but sometimes the warning messages will alert you to problems in your code that you want to fix. So it's always a good idea to just scroll up and look at them. So now I want to go back to my files and just point something out. So remember when I added this file to my source files, I said make a copy of it. So if I open this up in a text editor right now and scroll right to the bottom and have a look, I see that hello world doesn't appear in here. So this is my original code. No changes were made to it. So what got changed here? Well, it's the copy of the code. So if I go into my project folder, I see a copy of that code. Let's open this up. Scroll right to the bottom and ah, here's hello world. So here's where my changes got saved. So when you're making changes inside the IDE, just realize that you're going to be making those changes to the copy of the code that you told MPLabX to use. This also means that if you want to make a backup of your code, so a backup of the changes you made, you don't want to be copying this version of the code because that's just your original code. There's no changes made to it. You want to go in and copy this version of the code. And by the way, fastest way to make a copy of something is hit Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it, and then just rename this copy. So backup01, for example. 